All right, so as far as rigging up for shrimp, this is really easy. There's obviously a lot of different, a lot of different options. In most cases, the, the, the most feeding is gonna happen on the bottom. And so we, we wanna just basically have a hook. In this case, we're using a circle hook. We're gonna get uh, my niece on some fish here. So a circle hook, we have some live shrimp, and then we're gonna use just a little split shot. To, to, we don't have much current going on here, so we just want enough weight where the, the, the weight's gonna keep it on the bottom, but it's still gonna enable the current to kind of move it down the shoreline. And there's some, a deep shoreline with mangroves here. Again, lots of structure. We have some current and we know there's bait fish around. So the odds of success here are pretty high. So uh, what I've done is I just tied on a lure. We have a 10 pound braided line, connected that with an FG knot to some leader. And this is just 20 pound mono leader, nothing fancy. And so we're just gonna tie a snug knot here to the circle hook. I'm just do the Orvis knot. I'll put a link down below for, for uh, a detailed directions, but you basically make a loop, go through that loop once. And then the second loop just made, Go through that twice. Super simple, surprisingly strong, and really small. So now we're just gonna cut that tag end off. And again, the good thing about that knot is you can quickly re-rig if you have kids out. So the hook is now on there, and now about maybe 10 to 12 inches above the hook, we're gonna put that split shot. And to do that, I just have pliers handy nearby. I just put the line, I open the split shot up first, put the line in there through it, I just close with my fingers first, and try to get it on there at least a decent amount. And then I'll finish the job off with the, with the pliers. That way this split shot is not moving. It's now affixed to the line. So now we have the split shot that's gonna keep the shrimp near the bottom. The, the circle hook that's gonna enable the, uh, you know, the fish that whatever bites it to get hooked and it won't be throat hooked. You know, even if uh, my seven year old niece isn't paying attention, you know, the, the fish should get hooked on the jaw because this circle hook will just wrap around the jaw and just set itself once it starts putting pressure on the line. So that's it, let's get started and I'll show you how to rig up the bait. All right, so as for rigging the shrimp, there, there are a lot of options as well. What I generally like to do, especially if I'm free lining in this case, where I'm just holding it close to the bottom, is that you can see on this shrimp, there's this dark material, that's their brain. And then it has this, uh, this spine. So in between the brain and the eyes, but underneath the spine on the top, there's a little soft zone. And, that's, uh, and that'll basically, it'll hold really well, but it won't injure the, uh, the shrimp. So let me just punch it through with this circle hook. Oop punch it through so there you can see that it's you know it's above it's above the brain so above that dark that dark matter and right below that what's called the horn and, uh, and not not quite to his eyes and so that shrimp's gonna gonna be able to when it is on you know when it is fluttering down it's gonna look natural uh, if the current does sweep it all the way across that shrimp is gonna be just facing the current it's gonna be in a natural position once it gets spooked it'll start doing its little you know, its little dance and that's just gonna trigger the feed to happen so let's go ahead and I throw this out and see what bites. So here's what that shrimp looks like. Again, it's in this in a natural state. So if I was free lining it, right, it's just it's just naturally swimming along. You can see its its legs kicking. So it is free. It has freedom of motion right now. And uh, and again, when it's hooked this way, it'll stay alive for a really long time. So what we're gonna do is uh, there's a, a deep trough. So by these by these mangroves out here, this uh, this current just hits it really hard, and so it's carved out a nice deep trough right next to the current or right next to the, the trees. So we want this bait to, we know there's structure there, right? Those mangroves have a lot of roots. And this is to be the same way if you're using, if you're fishing like a jetty or a rock system of some sort, you know their structure, you know there's depth. And so we want to get that shrimp just right there as close as we can. And uh, in this case, so I'm going to cast it up there. And now the current is, is the current is sweeping from left to right. So I cast it up to, to the, purposely cast it to the left of this little point. And so that current is just going to take this bait down and, uh, and get really close to that point. And that's, that's uh, technically where most of the strikes should happen. So I got it out there. We're going to let Shauna take charge. And uh, she should be on some action here in, uh, in no time. Good job, Shauna. Let's see what we have. Ooh, nice snapper. We could actually we could take this home to eat. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I did it by myself. Good job, Shauna. So this is a keeper size snapper. Shauna, I, I did the first cast and, uh, and, and the current took it over, no luck. Shauna literally pulled up the, the bait, threw it herself, and uh, <laughs> caught a keeper snapper all by herself. That is just the beauty of using, you know, using these, uh, the live bait and, and doing it on the bottom. You can catch snapper. We can sit here and catch snook, redfish, trout. We're in the feeding zone. We position ourselves properly. We just soaked the bait on the bottom. And, uh, and seven-year-old can cast, 
retrieve and reel it in all by herself. That's awesome. Good job, Shauna. Shauna, good job, buddy. <laughs> and so one trick as far as unhooking these, if you've never used circle hooks before, uh, just, just basically circle the hook around. Just do a big circle and it'll eventually pop out. So you can see that hook popped right out. Oh, the snapper, uh, do not put your hands near their mouths. Uh, they have very sharp teeth. And uh, we'll probably let this one go. Are you going to keep it? <laughs> All right, this one's coming back with us. Good job, Shauna. But again, uh, so so cool to be able to take a take a young one out fishing and have a have a good fish. These are terrible tides right now. So you can put it in there all by yourself. Terrible tides, but uh, we just found us. We just maximized the current, got ourselves in the zone, and she was fishing for no more than five minutes, and uh, we caught our first fish. So success so far. We'll probably catch some more. Let's do it, Shauna. Good work. shauna has got a fish back behind us. It sounds like a ladyfish. Yep, ladyfish. <laughs> Ladyfish. Shauna, you're on the, you got a hot hand back here. Hot hand, all right, bring it on up. <laughs> Thought I heard some fish jumping back there. So yeah, we've just been out here for a little bit and uh, Shauna's got multiple fish. She's doing it all by herself. Again, we're in this feeding zone, so that's more of a roamer type fish. So the uh, ladyfish can kind of go all over the place, but uh, we're in the spots so where we're catching both the ambush predators and the roamers. And uh, we're just getting started. So let's see what else you can get next, Shauna. It's the easiest one. Oh, another, whoa, big old pinfish. Look at the size of this pinfish. Oh my gosh. Can we keep it? <laughs> that is a giant pinfish. Good job, Shauna. <laughs> this is the strongest one in the world. Shauna's on again. Shauna's got the hot hand. Oh, big snapper. Nice snapper. All right, that's, oh. no, that's enough reeling. That's enough reeling. <laughs> that's a nice snapper. Check that out. Nice work, Shauna. It's a pretty snapper there. I'm catching all the fish. I'm catching all the fish. <laughs> and yeah, so so we have the bobber going on the other side, and it's not a coincidence that the the you know the setup with the weight, you know, the the feeding action is most often happening on the bottom. Nice snapper. Good job, Shauna. <laughs> I got five fish. Good job. Hey, high, high five, five for number five. Fish. All right, let's do it again. Ooh, this might be a snooker red here. Sean, do you want to reel it? All right. So this is the bobber. Ooh, ooh, it's fighting good. Yeah, hold that rod. Keep that rod bent. Ooh, that's, I think that's a snook. Good job. All right, and we got it. Nice work, Sean. <laughs> All right, so the circle hook is right in the corner of his mouth, right where it's supposed to be. Yep, Shauna did a great job there. Get that snook off and we'll get him released. Get him back in there quickly, let him grow up to be bigger. That was a lot of fun. That fought, that fought good, didn't it? Yeah, did that fight harder than the snapper? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Shauna, yeah, that's awesome. the cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the cool thing about this type of fishing because you can not only have a lot of action, but you can catch some good fish. and. Uh, and if there's some bigger snook that are coming through, they're gonna be eating this as well. So it's about doing the mechanics properly, get yourself in a good spot, and you can have a ton of fun, even on days like this where the current is really not doing much at all.